Okay guys, welcome back to the Kamaz build. First of all, we got a parcel from Petersburg. Igor from Mini Arm has sent me the, uh, the correct wheels now. So we have them built up. Look at the detail on these. Check out the Mini Arm uh, website. So these are the Kama um, wheels with the uh, very nice depiction of the bulge in them under the weight of the vehicle. In addition to that, Igor has sent me a updated air filter which replaces the one um, that comes within the kit apparently all of them were replaced um, uh, as, as a upgrade to the uh, Kamaz and that will go on there and this part attaches onto the rear of the cab so we've got those parts on there so let's get on to the next part and explain about the scheme and uh, the painting Okay, so here we are with the layout of the vehicle, basically in this, the factory green camouflage. Now, let's think of something a little bit more interesting to do. And here it is. This is our plan. We're going to be looking at, this is the video game squad. It's a military simulator game. And it uh, contains various factions, including Russians, Americans, British, Canadians. And uh, as you can see, we're looking at a... Kamaz 5350 in this rather unusual and interesting scheme. Obviously, entirely related with the video game, but as we look around, there's a mixture of obviously you can see the base screen, um, we can see a camouflage pattern that's been sort of hastily applied. So, this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to follow this scheme. So, uh, let's get on with that. Okay, so prior to application of the camouflage scheme on top of the green we're going to use some hairspray so let's take this apart now we only need to be concerned with the components that are going to have the camouflage on it so not the wheels but these components here the doors the cab and uh, yeah we're using real hairspray because that's what we have so hairspray we're just gonna do a light coat on top and then let it dry make sure you get your roof the back of the cab etc that needs to dry the doors This bit will get the most weathering on here is the cargo bed. So just hit that. There we go. Smells nice. Let that dry and we'll go on to the next stage. The other thing that I'll do is apply the decals. Uh, basically all we need is the license plate number. So I'll stick them on and we'll go on to the painting. I've affixed the doors on using some pattern fix just to hold them in temporary position there. The camouflage, I'm just going to use very basic colors. NATO black and desert yellow from Tamiya. Okay, and um, in terms of dilution, really, if you want to do any sort of chipping effects uh, with these sort of um, acrylic lacquers, it's best off to mix them with water. I don't like to because I want a fine spray pattern. So I'm actually going to use my normal Mr. Leveling Color, use 50-50 mix. Use an airbrush that's, um, I use the finer one, I use the, um, the point three and um, affect this camouflage pattern. So let's get on with that now.
Okay, so everything's had a chance to dry now. And we're going to try and affect some um, scratches of the paint. The idea here is that, we're again, we're following those reference photographs, is that the green base was on, and then they did a sort of hastily applied camouflage um, color on top. And we're just going to scratch just in a few areas as if the coating wasn't that great. So we don't want to take a lot of this off. But as usual, the first thing we do is moisten the surface with a bit of water. And uh, the main tools that I'm going to use to affect these scratches are kebab sticks. So let's just see if we can get into this, start this to get this activated. And then we'll start to see if we can chip out some of this paint. I'm not going to go overboard, just want to give that idea and also try and keep it as um, basically how those, uh, how it looks within the squad game because that's our reference. So you can see a few scratches, just put them on. So it's not like, I don't know, people get confused about this hairspray technique. It's not to do a little chip, well, you can do, it's not the ideal sort of method on doing little chips. It's quite a good way of depicting um, temporary, like paint wear. And that's what we're going for on this. So not everywhere, just uh, in a few places use that because it's this um, Tamiya paint as well it's gonna have it's gonna it's not gonna come off on these really big chunks as in an acrylic so instead to actually get the chips going or scratches to be more accurate it is preferential to use pointy instruments ie kebab sticks um, Toothpicks as well can do it. Or if you've got a very firm bristled brush as well, that, that will also do it. And a few more areas up here. On that edge to come away. If I sort of just keep on, need a bit more moisture there. There you go, I'm starting to go. There we go, nice bit of wear and tear there. A bit more on here. So I'll continue this, no point showing you everything because there's still the cargo body to do as well. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, well, you can see there's all little sort of scratches on here. Now the only thing is that I've had to sort of dig in quite a bit with the uh, kebab stick here. And in some places I've actually taken this down to the bare plastic. However, this is, um, you know, really fine sort of scratches that I've been able to get on here, um, which is what I wanted to match those references. The only thing is I'm gonna have to do a bit of touch up um, to repair the areas where there's bare plastic, so obviously that looks pretty terrible, but uh, generally quite like the effect. Cab, similar. Didn't do too much after what I showed you. Just a bit of wear and tear on the door, on the front, just sort of scratches a few places. And that's everything to um, give it that look as if the uh, camouflage was sort of hastily applied. So, um, and we also have to do a bit of touch up again on here. But that's just one of those things. So we'll do that with the brush. And um, also I want to get on with the weathering the chassis. So I'm going to go straight onto that right now.
In terms of the chassis, we're going to go for dry brush for the metallics. Um, the call out on the instructions was for the transmission area um, to be in aluminium colour. Now, obviously that's just too deep under there. Everything's been base coated and remember this has already had a spray of satin varnish on it. Yeah, so my idea is to go for the brighter aluminium colour first, dry brush and then follow up with the burnt iron which is obviously a lot darker and uh, typical dry brush technique. So hopefully we've got the paint the right thickness. Don't need very much at all because um, we do not want to make this effect overly harsh. So as usual, paint the brush, get as much off as you can. Paper towel really helps for some reason. And let's just go straight in there. We'll start underneath and hit this area underneath here. And try and get some coverage on those components that were called out as being metallic colored. Now, just points to note as well, this is going to be, well, you're going to see anyways, they're going to go in for some uh, weathering all on these areas anyways, regardless. And uh, also, I mean, I don't know how much of this we're going to see. I didn't really check that, but um, I'm just try I'm trying to follow the uh, the references. The other area, I'm just going to do like a little bit of just a little touch on bumper area, just on the side, and a very just a little area as a dry brush there. Now I don't think I'm going to do too much of this chassis, mainly because it just they just don't look like that really, and um, a lot of these components as well, I don't want to even touch with metals with the metallics because uh, obviously they're rubber, they're rubberized type components. I'll just give the engine a little bit of a dry brushing and I did say the radiator as well. Don't think you, I don't think you can see this in all honesty, but if you can, there it is. Just go inside there again. Basically that'll do for the um, metallics on there. I was thinking about doing this wire rope, but I, I don't want it to look metallic. I want it to look greasy. So basically as simple as that, really just did that with the brush. It does not need to be accurate uh, because of what we'll be doing next. And I think we'll go straight into that now. Okay. Just to quicken things up and I'll just explain the logic here. Um, I want all of the underbody to be basically tinted with a um, light dust and I want to do it quite quickly and I'm going to try these out uh, these acrylic colors the washable earth and the washable sand from ammo of MIG never used them before ever have no idea how that how this is going to work out but this is the plan of action is um, because I'm going to use with acrylics is I'm going to over spray all this and what I've done, this is my solvent, which is water, of course, because we're using acrylics. And I've added just a little bit of dishwash um, soap inside here. So that should break down the surface tension. So what I'm going to do is just sort of give a squirt on top of all this. Now I'm going to mix up the solutions. Again, water-based. So I think I'll go with a mixture of these colors and see how this works out for us. Should be interesting to see what happens here. Again, I need to dilute this 
basically for the sake of it uh, being able to be applied by the brush and then let's take a large round brush mix all this up and just start applying it all over the entire chassis now the idea of applying that um, water and dishwash soap behind uh, prior to doing this is in order to break down the surface tension and hopefully um, minimize the sort of um, you get these effects of um, basically like water marks and stains because the paint dries in small puddles so we'll see how this works out for us I mean it's very quick to do as well and I want to show you techniques that are quick um, where I'm not gonna say it's less important but basically in areas we can go a little bit quicker and that might give you maybe more time to concentrate on um, the effects that take more time to do so I'm talking about you know uh, individual brush chips or the weathering that we're going to do with oils as we uh, work through so this is going to go on absolutely everywhere I'm going to do every component Now, because this is washable, that means that if we go too heavy somewhere, we should be able to remove it. And in addition, when it dries, I'm sort of hoping, I'm gonna check that, I'm gonna check to see what the effect is and we'll see in a minute or a second for you guys. It's gonna take a few hours to dry. We'll see what the effect is like and if we want to modify it at all. Bearing in mind, this is the underneath the chassis and um, it's not exactly the most visible area. It's difficult to see, but really the main thing I'm concentrating on is getting this wash everywhere. I don't want the, I don't want a clean area. Um, that would be detrimental to the effect. If you know what I mean, when you apply these washes, um, obviously you're creating an overall filter effect of dust in this case but if there's a clean area um, that actually shows up very clearly um, when everything dries so just bear that in mind that you have to sometimes adjust but of course the advantage of working these acrylics is twofold one is the nature of the um, acrylics they're friendly to work with you know there's no smells or any um, toxic chemicals involved we're just using water as a solvent and also you can work very quickly with it as well it doesn't take too much blending and it's cheap as well because your solvent is water you know you can go to town I'm just going to actually apply a little bit more of this soap on here because I just want this to run into everything. I'll put this down just for the moment and I'll just explain as well. The other area we're going to go for is only the underneath of the cargo bay area because the other effects are going to be done somewhat differently so I'll just quickly start throwing this stuff on here and the other area will be the underneath of this cab as well and this is not gloss as well you're going to see the difference actually in the way that the um, the acrylic will react with the flat surface so anyways I'm going to get on with that and it's probably going to take um, a good few hours to dry and I'll show you what it looks like okay so all these parts have had time to dry let's uh, just have a look and see what we think of the results um, you can see that 
on the chassis here a bit heavy to be honest the concentrations have come in a little bit too much on there on these parts um, that needs to be addressed however on the top on the sides of the chassis I've got that like light film of dust which is what I was after um, also it it looks fine enough to represent dust actually it's uh, I'm really quite impressed actually how this acrylic wash has turned out um, here's the underneath of the load compartment uh, main area is concentrated on these mud flaps to get them sort of nice and dusty and then actually I did the inside as well just sort of gave it a very light wash um, again it just in random sort of areas it looks really quite good um, in fact I was so impressed with it I actually decided to try it on the tires because my original plan was to use oils um, to get the dust effect on the on the wheels but actually I think this looks really quite good so I'm probably going to use it um, and I'll show you how that's done later on on the rest of the tyres now cab as well um, I applied a little bit more inside the interior and I've also done the windows now this is meant to be washable so let's just test that premise the idea is just to get the sort of dust around the edges so if i sort of give this a wipe around like so to create a sort of as if it's gonna be around the corners you see it's coming off can take off as much or as little as you need to actually that looks pretty good so I've got the dust around the outer area which is what I wanted to do um, just show you that again did the same thing on these door windows so just moisten the q-tip and just give it a bit of a, a polish and a circular pattern now if this is removable fully removable these heavy deposits on here where it's a little bit too much they should come off in theory let's use my brush to do that so if we re-wet the area reactivate it should wash off in theory well the proof is let's take a clean q-tip and see if anything comes off it is but not as much as I hoped but then again it does need to remain dry maybe I keep on wetting this and it just looks a little bit too concentrated on that muffler and in some other areas but uh, certainly on the um, the areas where the plastic's a bit glossy like the transparencies that is um, really working out quite well so on the wheels and the tires I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go with this uh, the acrylic wash I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make up another solution and I'm going to do the wheels, but I'll do that later on. So I've got some other things to do now. Uh, really, I want to get this a little bit more assembled now. Um, I want to get things glued together. And then we can go towards the final stages of the weathering. But um, yeah, I think that's worked out quite well for ourselves. So uh, I'll do a few bits and pieces sort of offline. And then we'll come back and get this thing more or less together. Okay, so skipping forward, we've basically got the truck built up. I'm just going to show you that. Had a little bit of problems attaching the cab, must be honest. 
the fitment points are quite minimal because they've kept it like the real vehicle the uh, rear cargo beds on etc the spare wheels on that new new air filters on everything's attached uh, most difficult part was these small little foot wedge parts that go on the bottom there but uh, that's all together and we need to do also in addition the uh, the doors have got the mirrors added with the reflective component which was part of the decal set now i've got a mask to go on the um the front windscreen that's going to come into play with the weathering uh this needs to go on here and then of course the wipers need to go on i'm going to put this on now i just want to show you something uh basically precaution these um paper masks they stick on very firmly and um that can be sometimes a problem so i want to reduce the tack by quite a bit by just continually reapplying it on my flesh and taking it off and then that's going to go on like so there we go so we've got that mask on the front for the last part of weathering which we'll come back to in the meantime the wheels have been um, painted up um, flat black the darker portion is also a flat black but all i applied was a semi-gloss varnish and i just sort of detailed up the wheel nuts now i said for the weathering that we're actually going to go and use the uh two washable paint mixtures again so i'll show you how that's done let's just zoom in here we'll take one or two wheels and i'll show you how that's done the first thing that we need to do is mix up um, a wash we're using the washable earth and the washable sand so we just add a few drops we want this pretty dilute this time um, because of what we're wanting to do in terms of effect we basically we don't want to blur out all the detail uh, what instead we want to do is actually pop all the highlights of that tire tread all the sidewall detail and also run some within the tread pattern as well so what we need to do is add some water to dilute this down further and then again we're going to use our mixture of water and dish soap to just sort of get these damp well i mean they're absolutely getting soaked but what we'll do now is actually get the excess just to take off we don't have to soaking but we want the whole area moist this is going to help the wash flow so that's all done now get the round brush go straight into the mixture and start applying quite liberally this is very dilute deliberately and we might apply a few layers but this will start off the process so I'm just trying to get rid of that so this is going to be the first sort of layer that we do I just want to build this up subtly because that way I don't obscure any of the detail but also the weather is going to match what we've done previously so just apply this might go on a little bit thicker because i think i think it could be a little bit less dilute now thinking about it but uh, this gives just a like a nice filter effect as well um so i want that to run everywhere i may as well do all these wheels let's just get rid of the excess on that one There we go. It's just going to tint them, basically. I want to do the other side as well. Now, I'll make this a little bit more concentrated by putting a few more drops in there. Mixing it on up again. You can see straight away it's more concentrated now. And now I'll reapply to the tread. I won't... And then I'll probably go and do the center section as well but let's just 
quickly do that. And this is going to be like a, I think about a three stage process which I'll go through. Let's do a few of them a bit more heavy. I think we can go a little bit more heavy here, run this all over. And I just want to show you how the, the detail starting to pop, all that sidewall detail is clearly made out, which is really what I wanted to, to show from these really exquisite mini arm resin wheels. If you've got extras like this, you definitely don't want to just cover them in mud. You want them to, you want them to be uh, artistically weathered. I don't know what you call it. Anyways, weathered so that we can pop the details. And we're doing it by a wash. We're not doing it by a dry brush. Try and randomise the quantity a little bit um, between them, if possible. Now, don't forget the inner portion as well. Now, the only thing with this is that we have to let this dry, uh, which takes a little bit of time. But what I will do is run along after this segment, get my hair dryer so I can quickly show you where we are. So let's do that now. Okay, so these tires have had time to dry, sort of. I'm going to show you what they look like now. Uh, details popped out. The um, washable acrylics dry, sort of like dusty pigment. I'm really pleased on the turnout. Now, all of them are quite similar. And I'm probably going to just do the uh, it's stereotypical sort of modeler's approach to um, tyres, actually, which is the exact opposite of reality. Uh, so excuse me for it, but it's just basically what we do. Okay. What we're going to do is going to highlight the tread pattern by dry brushing with NATO black. So as if the um, tread has been running against asphalt and all the sand has disappeared. Actually, if you look at reality, it's, uh, it's typically the opposite. In fact, um, the sand sort of doesn't go into the treads. It tends to uh, actually not be there. So dry brushing NATO black and that's pretty simple and the thing is just trying to avoid and what this does actually this um, NATO black when it's sort of polished dry brushed on like this because we're not airbrushing it it doesn't exactly go flat instead it tends to be sort of uh, like a semi sort of uh, satiny type finish to it and it looks like polished rubber what a coincidence eh? so let me just do a few more so dry brush is dry brush nothing really to it is there the main thing is to get all the excess off your brush uh the time of your paints do dry brush really quite nicely let's just do this quickly once this is done and you can, if you really, if you want to, you can actually dry brush the details. You can make them pop a bit more as well, if you wish. And actually, it's probably better to do this because the sidewall details are going to be the most obvious part of the model when you look at it side on. So anyways, not that exciting. Let me uh, continue the dry brushing of all these, stick them on the vehicle, and then we get on the last part. Oh, and also maybe I should show you this as well. Um, I'll probably go through this at the end, but let me show you now while I remind myself what I've done is um, we haven't used the traditional sort of dark panel lining. Instead, we've done quite much the opposite. We've used that um, acrylic wash 
instead to create dusty lines where the panels are so um, you don't need to do everything the same but I, I try and sort of make this point in my videos that your weathering can vary but we'll see how that looks like later on I'll go through a full analysis but just wanted to sort of tell you that now okay so I've had a fast forward a little bit here just uh, because these videos are getting way too long but I will elaborate if you want me to on some of the processes right briefly okay to get this effect here you saw the mask go on all we did was uh, take the um, washable sand dilute it with some water and airbrush on and I airbrushed basically everywhere you can see this sort of filtered dusty effect because of course the dust is going to go on the front of the vehicle doors are glued on the wheels are glued on obviously now so everything's in place everything looks pretty good um, but of course if we go back to our references this was a squad um, logistics command so we've got some cargo add in uh, these get white glued in but basically here's our logistics load and these have already been pre-weathered I don't want to show you all that because uh, just be going on forever and ever really with this build but um, got a nice little load that goes in the back there that represents um, what squads about because this is the vehicle that resupplies your bases put them in there and a spare tire whatever we want to do and um, I did find another jerry can so that can go inside the holder here if it fits uh, maybe not okay so maybe he goes in the back as well so there we go so I'll take some here's some final shots in essence uh, really enjoyed this uh, project enjoyed this variation on weathering because um, it wasn't my original plan my original plan was to go back to oils which i always use but i found that um, these washable acrylics um, just worked really nicely um, so got some dusty effects and that sort of matches the vehicle from squad so that concludes it obviously we'll be on with a new build very soon so some finishing shots of course ask me some questions if there's anything you want me to elaborate on and i will go into better detail on some forthcoming videos but i hope you enjoyed this one see you soon and this is the bear and i am out of here